All right, welcome back to your social media project tutorial on Firebase. Uh, last time, what we did is we looked at how to send images to your uh, Firebase storage bucket and then also store some image metadata in a separate posts tree in your real time database. Uh, remember, the reasoning behind this is that you shouldn't store the image's metadata on the image itself because if you're just looking for metadata, what you don't want to have to do is search through entire images for it. You'd rather just search the metadata and then fish out the images that you want. It makes a lot more sense and it is also much faster. So th even though this seems annoying, it's actually good practice and is how it's done uh, professionally. So that said, uh, it, does, it was annoying to start with, but now it makes our lives really easy because we can just get every object in this post tree here and we can set the source of an image equal to the URL of each object, which is conveniently set to the download URL of every image we've uploaded to our storage bucket. So this could be pretty easy. Let's consider though how we want to display the images. When somebody clicks to look at the public feed or something, there's a lot of different ways that you can display, uh, you can display content. Sorry, I just need a drink of water. Um, and this is where your site can really differentiate itself from other ones. Um, I'm going to show you a very basic three-column layout. Um, however, I don't want you to limit yourself to that. Okay, so your your design needs to be different. Maybe it's going to be four columns, maybe two columns, maybe just one column. Maybe it'll scroll horizontally instead of vertically like the one I'm going to do. Um, I want you to, to innovate on top of it, but I do want to show you how to, how, you know, the basics how to do this. So I've set up a very simple uh, blank kind of HTML template here. Um, you know, here's all just the stuff from before, you know, our links to our Bootstrap, our Font Awesome, and uh, our Bootstrap CSS, our CSS file, um, our navbar from before. I've got this container, this blank container, which I'm going to give an ID of a content holder. Okay, that's going to hold all the content. Below we have our Firebase initialization, our Google API, JavaScript, all the standard stuff. And our timeline.js function is just a pretty standard document.ready. And I put these in the same folder. Um, again, this should be better organized, but for now it's fine. All right, so what are we going to do? The first thing we want to do is we need to query our Firebase um, for this information. Now, you'll have to remember that users can't do this unless they're logged in. So first we have to see if a user is logged in. Turns out there's a pretty good way of doing that. Uh, if you go to the authentication page in the guides on Firebase, manage users, um, right here is the standard way to listen for if a user is signed in. And the reason you do it this way and not right away like this is because when your page is loading, you don't know if Firebase is done authenticating the user yet. If you do this, you can try it. You can go ahead and try it if you want. If you do this, this will fail because when your page is loading, as it is in the document.ready function, we're still waiting for Firebase to finish authenticating. Here, we know it's done. If user is positive, there's a user signed in. Otherwise, actually, otherwise, we should redirect them. Dot location equals, we should redirect them back to the index page to sign in. All right, so if the user is signed in, what do we do? We want to, well, first we have to do, we kind of have to do this in two steps. First, we have to download, actually, we don't really have to download. Nah, we'll just query the database. So we're going to run a function that says query database function query data oopsie query database and if we want to we can even get information from the user right here for example if i type user.uid is the token for that user and i send it with the query database we could theoretically get um excuse me we could theoretically get only the images associated with a particular user say you wanted to go ahead and implement this tab that's just about your pictures instead of all the public ones, you could theoretically build your database query like we're about to do to, to search for only ones that have this token. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Um, but user.uid is indeed how to get that out, I believe. I guess you'd have to do this instead. Firebase.auth.currentUser. Firebase.auth dot current user dot UID. Anyway, all right, so now we have to query the database. 
all we need to do is do a simple read, a one-time get data, um, which we've done before. You'll remember if you want to get data once, um, you can go ahead and run where to go, this function right here. So firebase.database.ref slash, we're not looking for users, we're looking for posts. And we actually just want all of the posts. Okay. Right, so we want all of the posts. We want their value. We don't really care what the keys are. And then once it's done, function with a snapshot is the argument. Snapshot.val is going to be an array of posts, I believe. Let's go back and check our JavaScript. Um, pretty sure that was true, though. Let's see. Ref the users slash UID. Oh, no, that was setting. We want to read. Can we read? Do we remember how to read? Maybe we didn't read yet. Set? No, we didn't read yet. Oh, huh. well, I'm saying that you've done this before, but you haven't. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, here's how you read data. Yay. <laughs> uh, Database.ref slash post is, remember, that's how our tree is structured, right? Here's the root reference slash posts. We want all of these. And snapshot.val is everything here. It's all of these objects, which I think will be an array. So what I want to do is I want to first log this before we do anything. I want to log post array to make sure that this is indeed an array. This is, again, before we do anything at all. Otherwise, we're probably going to mess ourselves up. And we don't want that, do we? We don't want to mess up too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and upload this to GitHub. One moment. So I'm going to click on Timeline. I guess I should sign in first. Let's sign in first. All right, so I'll go to the Timeline. Let's see, this looks like it's running appropriately. All right, so here's the log of our, uh, of our post object. And you can see that it's actually an object containing objects. So if we want to loop through this, we kind of have to do some JavaScript jujitsu. Um, how about that? Uh, but we can still do it. So post array is actually a post object. OK. But we can turn all the keys into an array by doing this. Uh, you can do keys is equal to, I think it's object.keys post object. You can get all the keys out of this object by doing this. I think so. Let me just double check. Get all keys from object JavaScript. Object.keys, that's the one. I remember correctly. Okay. And then we can write a for loop less than keys.length, i++, plus plus, standard for loop. And we can say that we can loop through each object by saying the current object is equal to post object add keys and i. Look at that. So that'll loop through each one of these. And all we really need to do is get the URL and the caption. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to create a layout that's going to show the picture and the caption. Well, um, I think what I would like to do is just show the caption underneath the picture. Um, so that should be pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and create some HTML elements. We'll say variable. Um, well, we only have a container, so remember we need a row. Let's see. So for every three, if we want to have a three column layout, that would mean that our rows need to be called dash lg dash if it's three, we're gonna to need to have four. So every third one we'll need to create a new row. Create new row as well on every third uh, entry. So that'll read from left to right. Well, that, I guess that kind of makes sense. Left to right and then going down. Sure, okay. All right, so we'll say if every third row is i modulo 3 is equal to 0. That means at 0 and 3, 0, 1, yeah, OK. So we want to do a blank object here, a blank uh, variable. So we'll say current row equals document.createElement div. 
current row, add class row, and then what was the name of our div? It was content holder. Content holder dot append current row. Okay, so we want to do this every third time. Create a new row, give it the class, append it to content holder. Every single time, though, we also want to create a new column. And we want to append this class name to that column because we want it to be three column layout. So that means three times four is 12. All right. We also need to create an image. And we want to set the image's source to be current object dot URL. Is that the name of it? Dot URL. There it is. And last, we want to also create a paragraph text to put under it. And we want to set the HTML of that to be current object dot caption. That's what it is. Whew. Not even sure we can do this dot caption. We're going to find out. All right. So now we're going to put the image in the column, the P in the column, and the column in the row. We'll say call dot append image call dot append p current row dot append column too many parentheses oh, I've got one. let's just go ahead to and add some classes to the image so we can style them <clears throat> Just to make our lives a little bit easier. Say so image dot add class. We'll say content image, and we'll say p dot add class content caption. We'll style those in just a little bit, but I think what we want to do first is make sure this is indeed populating it. Um, are we forgetting anything? We're putting yeah. We've got the row onto the table. Sure, I think it's all good. All right, let's. Let's give it a try. I'm going to pause the video and upload to GitHub, and we'll test it together. Waiting for the changes to push out. As you can see, they're not quite there yet. You know, GitHub does sometimes take a second. Sometimes you have to close it and reopen it. Um, you know, don't forget that when you're testing your own projects. I know it can be annoying, but it's a, a fortunate reality of using... Uh, GitHub, so still not working. Still not working. Oh, we got some sort of an error. What's this? Post array is not defined on line 18. Oh, that's terrible. See what I did there? Oh boy. Go ahead and pretend that didn't happen. Um, now we have to go and upload it again. I'll pause. Uh, hey, hey, whoa, hey, hey. Hey, whoa, okay, all right. Uh, I guess it worked. <laughs> um, okay, very nice. Now, of course, this isn't looking quite good yet. We need to do some CSS work on this. Let's go ahead to our overrides. What were the two classes we said? We said content image and content caption. All right, well, first let's set the width of the image to be 100% of the column. Let's make sure Bootstrap is using its layout for us and not the other way around. Um, it's to our advantage here. So we're going to set each image to be 100% of the column, which is neat. Let's also do something to this text. Let's center it. We'll say uh, text align center. To make that work, you do need to make the width of this thing 100%. Um, we probably should use similar font. I don't know. If we wanted to mess with the font, that would be a good idea. Just change the font size to 1EM. I don't know. Whatever. Um, let's see what this width change does, though, because I'm a little bit wary that it might have greater impact than we think. So uh, this is overrides.css, so we can go ahead and upload this to GitHub and see if it works quickly. Oh, not the master branch. We don't want to do that. Well, you might want to. I don't know how you're setting up your branches. Mine are set up so that you guys have source code for every uh, part of the project. You can thank me later. 
you don't even have to thank me. I guess it's kind of my job. I just accidentally did it really well. You know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, here we go. We're merging. We're uploading. We're seeing if this works. Okay, hasn't pushed yet. Okay, this is better. So this dog is no longer huge. Like my caption. This guy's definitely weird. Um, now the unfortunate part, though, is that there's all this white space between the pictures. That's kind of lame. And if we look... Let's see. Each row is good. The columns have this, like... That green thing on Chrome is padding on each column. We don't want that because... I don't know. I don't really like... I mean, if you want the pictures to be touching, I guess that's fine. I don't know, it's really up to you. But we could remove the padding. For example, on col-lg, I'm going to show, do some editing in uh, in here so you can see what this looks like. Um, but if we remove the padding left, whoopsie, and the padding right, now all of our pictures are touching, which is neat. We also have this padding and margin on the container so we could change some of that. Notice what I'm doing here in the in the inspector. I'm, I'm changing the CSS before I actually put it in code. Um, this does a lot for you. Uh, it allows you to check out minor changes and what effect they might have. Um, and that's really useful because you don't always want to have to you know upload, push, commit. Um, you don't really always want to do that. You know, so I can I can experiment with various CSS changes here, uh, and that can help sometimes. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna reload. This is pretty neat, um, but it's really only the bare bones basics. Um, you know, you can you can add elements to each content window by changing it in the JavaScript. Let's pretend you wanted to add a like button. You know, you could say. Variable button is document dot create element, and that element is a button. You could say button dot on click function event. Right, you could do all these things. You could add a like button, and this is supposed to you know add like I don't know. There's a lot of different things you can do, and hopefully we'll get some tutorials up here about people who have branched out and done some outstanding work on customizing their display and making even more user interaction. And that's what I expect every one of you to be able to do at the end of this unit's videos, which is now. So, really, you've done a lot. You've learned how to use Firebase, which is a fantastic tool. I can't possibly stress to you how fantastic this tool is, guys. You really just want to keep cracking at it. Even if you don't get it yet, it's amazing. You've learned how to do a federated sign-in with Google, which is really neat. You've learned how to do some drop-down, some bootstrap stuff. And uh, you've learned how to upload files with captions. Yay, programming. Finally, you've learned how to take all of your information in a database and display it in some sort of format. And that's really just plenty for one quarter's work. So I hope you've enjoyed this quarter. I can't wait to see your final projects, and I hope they're even better, which would be very easy to do, uh, than this one. And uh, that's, all for, that's all for now and all for this quarter. So until next time. Happy coding. Bye.